Hey everyone, uh, my name is Trey Sora Shimago. Um, I go by Trey. Um, I am a health um, science major here at Georgia Highlands. Um, this is my final year. I'm hoping to graduate this uh, spring semester. Um, so the reason for this video is because I am making a presentation for uh, my current topics class um, about um, a specific chapter, Footloose and Fancy Free, in the Michael Trans Squared textbook. Um, a little bit about it, I mean, just first, like, I never even knew, like, this was a term, even though it is pretty much my lifestyle as well, um, and my lifestyle of, of many millennials, you know, now, of course. Um, if I were to, like, kind of, like, put it into my own words, what this term is, I guess it's, like, we are just more uh, about ourselves, you know. We're just more focused on ourselves. We're not. We're not really, because I, mean, I know, like back then, you know, people were getting married so early. Even like my family, you know, my mother was like married at like the age of like seventeen back then, and you know, having so many kids, of course, and as well as my grandma. Like I'm a family of eight. My mom is a family of like 13 um so like there for them it was just always like you know marriage have kids you know build a home you know have your career all set by like the age of like 21 or you know whatever the case may be um but you know so much of that has changed um for us millennials um you know now you know we are we are not having that many kids at the age of 17 or getting married at the age of 16, 17, 18, or whatever the case may be, you know, some, but not, you know, for, for the most part, for the majority, it's not that it's not the case. Um, and so I, you know, I, I guess just because of the way, you know, of course, how the, the economy has been impacted and, you know, the many changes that, that have happened, um, in, in our you know community in our world is it, kind of led towards this way where nowadays you know we're headstrong on education we're trying to figure out our careers we're not really like focused on you know marriage or like you know romantic relationships like i said earlier it's really just about you know being yourself and you know being free and being you know taking opportunities and not having to worry about you know romantic um situations or anything like that um so in the textbook like footloose and fancy free um so as you see here it describes a shift in living among the median age to the mill to the millennial generation um the millennial generation includes a population in the late 20s and early 30s um this category of individuals is more educated uh is more educated with you know two th two thirds of them having a college education um and in 2014, there were 12,000 more PhDs than those awarded to them in 2004, um, which exactly, like, you know, is what I mean by, like, we are now just so much more focused on education and, you know, being ourselves and pursuing our, you know, our selfish desires, or I guess really not selfish, but, uh, you know, our desires, our wants, you know, things that we, you know, feel like makes us who we are, um, and if I can, and exactly, so more focused on our careers and politics and making a culture mark. Um, additionally, they are more influential in society than their numbers and are characterized by uh, delayed marriages and strong desires to work. The footwork fancy free does not desire commitment and they yearn for choice and freedom. Um, and which is great. I think living that way is pretty like, it kind of gives you a chance to also just kind of figure out what you want to do instead of, you know, kind of being, you know, like just 
already having your your life figured out at the age of 18 which is not possible anymore i believe that was possible you know way back then but nowadays it's i mean unless you're just you know that lucky and you just have the whole every you know the whole world figured out then yes it's possible for you to have all that figured out and settle down by the age of you know early 17 or you know 20 or whatever the case may be um but these days it's just so much more difficult um so much more opportunities um really hard for you to just kind of you know put your foot down on one thing um like i say it's also life about opportunities that you know that happens and you know that that approaches you that you that you commit to um you know for instance like we are more like let's just pack up and travel right now you know and go explore this or go explore that um there's no single commitment to just one thing and i think also being in a committed marriage relationship and having a lot of kids or any kids at all also kind of just kind of puts a little bit of a um, pause on that sometimes um and and definitely i uh, this generation is definitely open-minded across um, sexual orientation race and gender um definitely a lot of things have changed from you know from back then till now um being open about you know gay marriage um or same sex uh marriage um and things of that nature and you know gender changes and you know all that stuff that are happening in the world right now um the fancy foot free nowadays in large numbers supports gay marriages um single parent medical care and the legalization of marijuana which was definitely not a thing um back then um I, even like medical insurance and medical care which are like things that our generation now are like trying to like you know fight more of you know or for and you know trying to create like a societal change almost you know from from how things were back then we're trying to create a change for us so that way it works better for us living in the you know in the world that we live in now um and i you know even though like i wrote this down it's just like yes yeah, smartphones right now are pretty much take, have taken over of course you know electronics and you know technology is so much more advanced now and you know back then you know there just wasn't that those opportunities to even have that you know i mean you had tvs but tvs are way different now um smartphones are the most recurring and inevitable expenditure uh, expenditure um additionally we do not they do not need a car they can get around on bicycles and the bike tracks built for them in major cities um they are more focused on where they live, work, and who they want to live with. I mean, one minute they are with roomies, the next they are living with their potential spouse, which is, you know, it's it's great, it's different, which is good. Different is good, change is good, you know. Um, so since the 1970s, what young people did in their early 20s has shifted to late 20s and early 30s, like making important life decisions, like getting married and having kids. Our, this generation takes a decade to date, learning what they care about, becoming independent, and forming relationships. Um, they prefer to be part of the team making decisions rather than make them themselves. And of course, um, many of you, um, of course, of many of us would definitely agree with that, I think, because dating, you know, in our generation now is not exactly as easy as it was back then. You know, you don't just like, you know, get set up with someone or you don't just meet someone, and you, you know, automatically get married. Um, definitely are more independent, um, though, I believe. Um, or actually, really, it just depends on who you are. You could be more independent, you could be more dependent as well. Um, this is, like I said, it just kind of depends on your situation as well in, in, in your life. Um, So if you will look at also my chart here, um, yeah, so a lot of millennials, um, transition to marriage in the past generations was more straightforward. It meant marrying a college lover and having kids, um, couples getting into marriage in this era, uh, conflict and interest. Men search for that manic pixie dream girl to help define their purpose while 
On the other hand, women are interested in the opposite kind of themselves. Um, over 50% of them end up not married um, in this time of time of our lives. The 10 years to marriage. Um, so the five years individuals took from high school graduation into marriage in this new era is now 10 years. So these 10 years are spent in urban apartments, um, video games, vacations, parties, food deliveries, and late night wormholes. Um, those are considered poorly spent as intoxicated life uses appear to develop skills in their careers. Um, others find ways to min minimize leisure time. They are free from taking huge responsibilities that their ancestors had taken at an early age. Okay. Um, so the effects of millennial generation. Uh, so the millennial generation poses a threat to major cities like New York, Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, and San Francisco. Um, these cities are highly populated, leaving no room for new offices. Therefore, with the older individuals earlier belonging to the millennial generation delaying the move to the suburbs and the younger generation moving into the city and the challenge of overpopulation will be heightened, uh, which is pretty much what we're seeing now. Um, the churches are likely to have fewer members with the presence of Tinder and five years of video games. Um, individuals are unlikely to be religious until they have a family or have a child. Um, I know I myself personally speaking, like my family is in, like extremely religious, um, but m me, um, I would say that I'm not as religious as they are. Um, just like I said, just because of how differently our lives have, have turned and taken, you know, the opportunities and the chances and, um, just the way that. I've lived my life and had to live my life, you know, was it's completely different from the way that my mothers and grandmas and grandpa and grandfathers have lived their lives. Um, the schools also will experience a new version of more older parents. Uh, forget about seeing these young parents at the PTA. Parents are going to be older than ever. Um, that's a quote uh, from Penn 2018. Uh, so short-term effects on healthcare. Um, so this graph right here that you see is a uh, percentage of millennials in the U.S. who have been told by healthcare provider that they have select health conditions as of 2018. Um, of course, depression was at 17 percent, overweight 12 percent, migraines 12 percent, um, anxiety disorders 11 percent, uh, high blood pressure 9 percent, asthma 8 percent. Obesity, 7%, high cholesterol, 7%, arthritis, 5%, um, ADD or ADHD, 5%. Um, and below there is the percentage of millennials, um, which kind of just, yeah, tells you exactly um, the percentage of of those people who had these um, conditions in, um, in health. Uh, loneliness and depression and anxiety are rising as they try to achieve their academic goals and confront the challenges of their new era. Uh, living in our society now, you know, it's so much more pressure. It's so much more difficult, in my opinion, is why also an education has changed so much, um, which is why it, it also causes like so much more like depression in teens or, you know, anybody living in our millennial time now um obesity um stress just because you know everything that's happening in our world right now just it's so much more difficult than it was way back then um so long-term effects on healthcare. so without interventions millennials of the same age as gen zers uh, could experience a 40 percent more mortality rate um, psychotic and substance use rates are expected to increase as well. Um, health for female millennials is more likely to deteriorate than that for males concerning type 2 diabetics, endocrine conditions, and major depressions. Um, oh, let me, uh, excuse me there. Um, healthcare will need more funding to handle the deteriorating health of the millennials following um, their health. And then my thoughts of the topic, um, I've pretty much kind of like been trying to tell my thoughts throughout uh, my PowerPoint, 
but I did think like this chapter, um, this specific chapter was very informative, and I I agree with most of their um the statements, and I think after you guys hear this too, you you also will agree. Um, it explored the significant attributes of millennials. Um, it explains millennials' economic challenges, such as overpopulation in significant cities, as we mentioned, like New York, D.C., um, in L.A., San Francisco, cities um, of high populations like that. Um, it, rec it records the onset of millennials in the 1970s that shifted the number of years an individual needed to make significant decisions in their lives by 10 years. Um, it explores the lifestyle changes among the millennials from those of their ancestors, such as they are not interested in TVs, but value their smartphones. Um, it justifies the changing norms in society, in society, such as the legalization of marijuana and gay marriages because of the millennials. Uh, well, thank you guys for listening to my PowerPoint. Of course, um, I look forward to hearing any of your um, any of your thoughts on this. Uh, feel free to um, quote anything or whatever you may like. Again, thank you for your time.